Hello, and welcome to another QA Automan tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to be adding another call from our example API, which is a post call, which is asking for a payload to be put in the body. And we're going to be creating that via data classes in Kotlin. And from there, we're going to add a new type of header using the content type and explaining that, and then asserting this call through chaining APIs to ensure that we in fact are doing the functionality of the API that is requested. So let's get into it. So first things first, we're going to add our new test here. We're going to have the test create booking, which is the where you have the ability to make a post call, which will create a booking with a bunch of data. We're going to send a valid payload, and then we're going to verify the payload is stored in the back end, right, of the da database. And we can do that through means of other calls. And I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about there. So make this a test. So we're going to create, we're going to create our test data. So we'll establish what that is. Then we're going to make a post call uh, to create booking that endpoint. Then we're going to assert the response using our test data to make sure that it was in fact, you know, sent and everything. And then we're going to verify the data is in the database. First thing we're going to do is look at what the payload looks like. So the payload here is, um, it has like a first name, last name, a total price, uh, some booking dates, uh, check in and check out dates. So, you know, this is a pretty, pretty basic payload here, um, which will be really kind of easy to make our, our, our model that we need to, to put into the endpoint. So let's actually create our, our payload. And one of the things I like to do is I like to do two ways. I either like to have a file that I will pass in into the payload. So we just pull it from resources or uh, creating a, uh, a data class that will kind of house our request payloads that we like to send for testing. So we're going to do that. And the client, we're going, um, actually, we'll just create another package here, call them models. Um, and inside the model, we're going to have the Kotlin class, and this one will be called create booking request body. And we're gonna make it a data class. And the reason we're gonna make it a data class is that allows us to kind of has boilerplate under the hood stuff that's set there. For example, we can copy the data class into a new a new instance, a new yeah, instance of it, or we can we can compare two data classes and have all fields compared to each other, which is really great. Um, so there's like a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. I, I like to kind of use this as as the go to. Uh, it, it gets a little bit of use uh, things you get used to because you can't uh, you can't have null values and things like that. So one of the things that we start doing when we look at the payload here um, is uh, I'm going to take this, move it over here just so that we use it as an example. So you can start you know, val first name, and this is a string. And so when you start writing out all of these field names down the line, um, you you want to make them be the exact name that you see here. The cool thing with a date with data classes or any class or model that you end up using is it will match these fields to field names one to one, which is fantastic. However, you will run into a little bit of um, something where like, um, you know, in Kotlin or Java, it, camel case is the go to for variable names, right? So it's like, how do I keep maintain a standard when something like, you know, maybe you'll have a, a field name with like an underscore or something weird, right? So what I like to do is do the camel case right the way it should be in the standards of, of you know, field names in a class. And we can add name, a, a, a notation to actually establish what the name is for our tail or for our yeah, JSON. Um, and we can do that by adding the, you know, Kotlin serialization plugin and, and dependencies. So we're going to do that. We're going to add this Kotlin plugin serialization. Uh, we'll do version 10 you know, or, or match the version that we have here. 
And then secondly, we're going to add the Kotlin X serialization uh, dependency. So we're going to rebuild, have it download everything, and we're going to head back to our data class. Okay, there it is. All right, serializable. That's what I was looking for. Yep, Kotlin X. Okay, cool. So we, what we're going to say is we're going to say this class is serializable. And then um, we're going to add serial name. And this is where you will be able to put the name exactly as it's stated. So um, ah, we got to make sure that this is also serializable since all of it is serializable. And date is not serializable. Serializable has not been found for type date. Um, interesting. You know what? For date, what we can do is we can do string for now, and we'll come back to that. String works just as just as well because it is a string. So, um, yeah, it, that's that's a non-issue. There there are there are date types that are serializable. I just, we're not going to deal with those right now. So we have the serialized name, first name, and we can do this for all of them. However, one thing I want to check is if case sensitivity matters here. So I'm going to, we're going to try it. And if, we, if it fails, we'll come back to it. So now that we have our model, we can, um, over here and we're going to say we're going to is, uh, here's our payload which is a create booking we'll import that and we are now going to establish what all of our data is so so first name will be qa last name is auto man booking dates equals booking dates and we can actually just here put in our, I'm just going to put these strings in, uh, check in this date and check out will be this date, um, just to kind of speed things up here. And then additional needs will be once, um, once breakfast, no dairy, <laughs> something like that. So this is, this is our payload. Uh, and we kind of have this going, which is great. So now that we have a payload, we actually now make our call. So in our call, let's we have given. And if I go to our thing here, uh, given our base URI is booking client dot URI. So we have our URI. We are now going to add a header. So we're familiar doing that. And there's a header content type. And this content type header is very common in with backend. Um, it uh, allows you to set the format of the payload that you are going to be sending to the server. Now, because it's so common, actually a really cool thing is you can do this, like which we've done before, which is great. Alternatively, there is a content type. Um, there's a content type string uh, call here that you can just use instead of putting in the header. So I think that's a good, uh, a cool thing you can use um, instead of making all these headers here. Um, we're going to again, content type JSON. That's what we accept, which we learned in the previous video. And lastly, we need our body and our body will be our payload. And that's what we're going to send as the post call. So, given when we post to our new endpoint and our path actually is slash booking. So the interesting part of this is we have a booking API client. We actually have our path booking path. Yeah, booking path. So we now have our call and look, it's really cool because we are reusing a lot of our stuff here, um, which is very, very cool. And we are going to uh, follow up with a then um, we have a, the ability to start testing or asserting our body and our 
our body actually is a lot of the same data. However, there's a slight difference that the payload has, and I'll show you the example of this payload here. It has a, has a booking ID and then it has booking and then it has, and you're very familiar, this looks exactly like the thing that we have here. We can do a couple things. We can test the booking ID is there. And secondly, we can get booking, extract that and put it into a data class. And there's, there's, there's some functions we can do to make that happen. Before we're going to get into all of this, there'll be a lot of tutorials around that. I am just going to do it just a kind of a really basic way, or just like a whole list of just kind of individual fields of the things that we want to do. So first and foremost, we'll start with the, you know, booking ID. Uh, we want to ensure that the booking ID is some value. We don't know what the value is. So that's going to be unfortunate. So um, let's come back to that. And we'll just do booking dot first name. And we're going to verify that against our payload first name. Um, oh, equal to so we're going to verify the first name, then we're going to verify the last name. And you're, you see what I'm doing here, right? Uh, total price. And then there's check out, check out. And lastly, additional needs. So we'll do additional needs. So this is checking or actually I'm going to delete this now. Uh, this is going to be checking all the things. I know we're not talking about the ID. Um, right now, um, see if I can, let's see if we can get that going. Let's just get the ID. Ah, there we go. So we needed to establish the type. I didn't realize yet. We had to put the type in here. So we're going to say is booking ID is an int, right? So we got to make sure it's an int. What it is, we don't know. Um, but that's, that's fine. So let's run this and we're going to log everything log dot all and given log dot all. So let's run our new test and see how it goes. Please put Jackson data bind juice. Ah, okay. So um, we don't have a JSON serializer. Okay, so a bit of an issue is because um, we need to use Jackson JSON JSON yeah, for rest assured. We can't use Collins. Okay, I'm going to, we're going to backpedal. We're going to go straight to the, we're going to get rid of the serialization. We're going to go, we're going to go the Jackson route. We'll just go to the newest version. Just do it. Newest version. There we go. Um, this is going to break a lot of things, but we're just going to quickly go through and, and so we're going to kill this, uh, kill this, <laughs> excuse me, kill this, kill this. Yep. That too. And we're going to build, rebuild S similar, similar concept, but what we are going to do is you don't do, need to do a lot of like the serial serializable and things like that. Um, however, there is a still the naming if you wanted to, uh, I think, but this one is called JSON property. So it's serializable name. So JSON property and same thing, which is first name. Um, so let's do that and everything's going to stay the same. Oh yeah, let's get rid of these things. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, so, so things that we don't need to do anymore. We can actually just send the payload directly in here. Oh, okay, still failing. Expected response body to be verified as JSON, HTML, or XML. I know. What the, I think I know what the problem is. I believe. It may have, it's internal server error. So that's really hard to debug, right? But what I think is happening is our body. 
So what I'm going to do, so I think this error is the, the parsing. It's trying to parse uh, plain text because the content is internal server error. That's the problem. It's like, well, this was supposed to be JSON, HTML, and XML. What we want to do then is just to verify, make sure is go back to our payload and then make sure that our names are all correct. So I'm going to do this. Um, also, you can do one of these two if you want to do inline. I think that's also a nice to have. Now, there might be a convention where it's like, no, annotations have to be on top. I get that. Um, I, I don't know the true standard for this. Um, I do like this for readability. So I wonder if this is the case. We're going to try it. Uh, remember, I did say we were going to try it, but we should match it exactly what. Yep, there it is. So again, matching the spec is very important. So this is why, you know, you want to do your JSON property or serializable names or whatever that may be. Uh, ensure that, you know, what, what it's asking for is here. Most of the time people will, you know, do the camel case, but sometimes like the underscores, it all depends on the developer, but a standard should be um, set. But let's look at our, our, our thing here. And our test passed, which is fantastic. So that means so our booking ID was this. Here's our information and everything there. So very cool. The test passed. Now we want to follow up with, oh, we are asserting our data. So um, we kind of just put this here, assert the response using our test data. Then we want to verify it's in fact in the database. Now, the thing to do here, and there's a lot of um, thoughts on, on how to tackle this. I personally, like to make calls to the endpoints that would be like the getters. So because it's like a, a CRUD, we want to, sorry, uh, CRUD is a create, read, update, and delete. We are like, this is us creating. And now we want to read and we've made that by calling the get call. So I am going to make that get call. So we're going to get, um, our response booking equals booking client dot call get IDs. But what we do want more than anything is our ID. So we do need to ensure that um, we're actually also calling the right, <laughs> the right endpoint. Uh, and we don't have it here. So let's now add our call get booking by ID. And this one requires a parameter. It's a path parameter like we've we've established before. ID string. And we're going to go back to our test here. And we're going to find we're making that call. I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Here. So ID will be ID the uh, let's do this. Sure. Yep. Status code is 200. Um, because again, we are establishing that this is the thing we need to use. So I this is why I like to to do that. What is, what is it yelling at me for what? Ah, 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 ah. There. However, we do need to add our um, extract bit, which is our response, um, because we want the response from this. So add the return at the top. Oh, reruns. No oh, return. There we go. So so we have call get booking by ID. And it's called get booking IDs. And maybe we can say, um, just for readability's sake, right, we can say get all booking IDs, right? So it, it's a little more clear what this is. So now we come back to our test and we're going to make this call, which is requiring an ID. So if this works, then we're going to extract our ID, JSON path dot get int. I think it's an int, is it not? Yeah. And then we get booking ID. That's what we want. 
And all this from the very top, as we say, um, created ID. Now we have a created ID, which is an integer, which we should establish. Get booking by ID, ID string. Nope, we can do int. Um, yeah, you can do int, that's fine. We will get our response from that. Then from there, we're going to get, but well, the cool thing this is a cool thing we can do. This is where the data class comes in handy. We're going to get our response. And what we're going to do is get um, response JSON. And this will be a way to take a, a response booking dot body. And then we can specify as a type. And we want to do it as our data class. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So cool thing is, is rest assured, we'll actually convert that body or try to its best and map everything to our request body. And then because it's this type, we can add an assert assert you can assert that yep that the response of oh, json response json equals what is it our payload that is like that Oh, yeah, we need to put our message. Verify the desired. Oh, why did this? Yeah, the reason for this is uh, our payload data from create is the same as the get booking call. The reason I'm doing this get, by the way, to verify it's in the DB instead of calling the DB is because we have tests that verify that this get called in fact works, right? We know that it works, right? And we're putting in data that we haven't put in before and verifying that it is in fact there with this ID, right? Um, and then some people can say, well, hey, what if you have, um, what if that is reran and it's the same data as before or something. And maybe it's, it's, it's from previous runs. Absolutely. So the, what the alternative could be, right. Is you like add in the beginning, a get call to make sure something is not there. Right. So I get QA auto man, you know, uh, bookings. Right. And if it's not there, um, and, and there's gonna be a lot of probably people with opinions here about which way to go. Um, but honestly, this is, this is a really great way to do integration testing. If, if you really want, and I, and I would say you could do this and recommend doing this, which would be call the DB, make sure it's there, right? Like make sure it made it over there and, and, and it's being stored correctly. Right. You know, uh, I think this is just a faster way, uh, to kind of get, get more bang for your buck. And if something does fail which you can do uh, as well as add, add some extra logic where if, if something fails, you kind of check the database for a lot of stuff too. So there, there's, there's that approach, but um, let's run this, make sure that this test in fact passes. Oh, perfect test pass. This is, this is great. Um, I think this is, this is fantastic that we're getting the, the right stuff here. Yeah. I think that will, this kind of got all the things that we wanted to do. Again, we, we established two ways of how to serialize something in, in Kotlin. We did show, showcase how you can create your bodies, payloads for uh, calls via data classes. We, you know, mess with content types a little bit, did make a post call. 
uh, kind of showcase like some some way you know how we can start asserting our payloads and then how we kind of run a check uh, for when we do create something and how to you know verify that is in fact the database um, and again see we are using using the uh, data classes allows us to just do equals you couldn't do this if it was just a raw class uh, so this is one of, again one of those benefits to having data classes Thank you, you know, made it this far and, and, and like what you see, please comment down below um, some, some ideas, thoughts, you know, subscribe, uh, more to come. So until then, I'll see you online.